Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Yes, we're here again. We're talking about this whore of a person i mean i thought she was a good person but one thing you just don't mess with in my book you don't mess with the kids you don't mess with senior citizens you don't mess with the handicap and you damn sure don't mess with the pets okay and to me marlo's over there now talking to claudia jordan who used to be a peach holder at one time yeah over there on her show trying to tell the ins and outs of her life and she's basically saying woe is me woe is me woe is me well my whole thing is it's beginning to look like it is a scenario type of setup to get you on the show to make you have a, a um a credible type storyline because you have no husband you have no businesses so what other part could you play for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. Because it's like. The cast was kind of shaken up. They didn't have really no standby people. And they had to replace people. Because of Cynthia had to leave. Portia had to leave. Nene wasn't there anymore. So it was just a lot of things. They were just throwing up in the air. Meaning production of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Bravo. Truly Entertainment. Whoever you want to look at. Okay. And they took a chance by bringing Sheree back. Which now I'm thinking was a bad mistake because her friend Fatuma, Fatuma, or F- or Fatune is her name. She may be replacing, okay, Sheree. Uh, because Sheree is not bringing anything but foolishness, fuckery, fraudulent, fakery type of a storyline. Now, do I really think that her and Tyrone had a true, true relationship when he was out and about? Running these Atlanta streets? Hell no. No. She wasn't his main chick. But when he got taken away, he probably thought she would be the one to hold him down and watch his money while he was going away. Okay? And that's the only thing I feel happened there. But Marlo, I do believe she had dated Ted Turner. She's trying to say it wasn't him. But I'm like, mm. Ain't that that man's name out of every man's name is not just gonna fly out of people's mouths and people ain't just gonna be talking about it if it didn't hold some validity, some truth to it. So but she maybe she signed the NDA clause that she could never to uh, the light of day, at least when he and while he's still on this earth, she could not say who her um sugar daddy was or man that took care of her. Now for me, if you have no income and a man is willing to pay you to be a part of his life. Not as a wife, not as a girlfriend, but just an escort. Because that's what they saw you as, Marlo, your claim to fame. And it's it's plausible that you were messing with some heavy hitters. But all the only thing they saw in you was ass. And you would do any trick of the trade that their wives wouldn't do. So they hired you to do that. Then you came on TV trying to out your sister, which we didn't know your sister had those many issues against her. Mental behavior issues and other things. Uh, That wasn't your business to bring out. And you damn sure shouldn't have brought the kids up in it either. And for you to even try to say you're going to hold the kids down until she get her life together was a complete farce. You used them as a storyline. And it's all making sense now. Because you didn't have a storyline to be on The Real Housewives of Atlanta anyway. Now from what I'm told, your gentleman friend bought you your townhouse, bought your mama townhouse. So... 
you talking about you don't want to take money? Uh, you want to have your own money? Or people wondering where you get your money? Yeah, because we don't see you work anywhere. So we have to go back to square one. You were a high price, allegedly paid prostitute for the rich and famous. You had to do whatever they wanted you to do. If they wanted you to eat their shit, you had to eat their shit. They want you to, you know, suck on a lollipop, you had to suck on a lollipop. If they want you to crawl around the rug or the or floor area like a dog, you had to do that. But you were getting paid. What is that? And I'm pretty sure you were doing the sexual things as well. But that's how you get your money, allegedly. Now, what you did to those boys was <sighs> piss poor. Irrehensible. It was a crime shame. Because if they were already feeling some kind of way, you made them feel worse. You took them for three years. And I'm pretty sure you got government funded money by being a point, uh, an appointed court guardian is what they call it. And you would be able to reap some financial benefit from that because you're taking care of your sister's kids. So it's almost like you're in the welfare system. Instead of them going to a adoption agent, well not an adoption agent, but um, you get put in a foster system, foster home, um, and people that want to take kids in, you become their foster guardian. Or parent. So that's pretty much what you did. Now were you able enough to say no. I don't want y'all hand out. I got this. <coughs> no. I think you took all handouts that you could possibly get. And it's plausible you put it on yourself. More so you put it on the boys. Them boys didn't know nothing about that type of lifestyle. Until you taught them. You showed them. You inquired. You required them to be more than what they probably saw themselves being. It was just you, I, and me. That's all it was. You, meaning you, I, and me. Or me, myself, and I. And you used these young boys for your ticket to get on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And then you had no real reason to kick them out. Because, say, if you really were their mother, you could pretty much go to jail for kicking your own children out. Look it up. That's called a parent not doing what they're supposed to do by a child. And putting that child in harm's way. And then you felt that you would just dump them off on your younger sister. Who already have four kids. From what the streets are saying. Why would you put that type of conditioning or lackluster more what do you call it um without lack of a better word you let your sister be a little bit more overwhelmed than she had to be she already had four biological kids of her own and you have an attempt a uh, 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 what do you call it a tantrum Life wasn't all about you anymore. You got tired of spending your money. Hey, bring me a, a sandwich. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it, it just mind boggles me. When you said that come out your mouth, I totally irrehensible was not for you anymore. Because how could you do that to children? It's almost like you're c creating the same pattern that was designed for you. I don't understand that, Marlo. I don't understand it. I can see that's why you're so cold, calculated, and heartless. When it comes to when you see Candy got a good man. Love his children. Okay? Love it on his children. And you could tell baby Ace to love his daddy. You trying to throw salt on something that you see. Or what you feel you want and can to have. At first I didn't think you were all jealous and stuff like that. But now I can see a little bit clear now. I'm out. My rose colored glasses are off. Now I ain't going to say candy is the P 
epitome of a good parent and we should role model ourselves. I ain't saying that at all. But I am saying Cat's not a bad parent. And you can tell those children love her. And I don't think anything would have come from her not protecting her children. Same thing with Todd. They knew exactly what they were getting into. Maybe Todd didn't want the second one right quite fast in a hurry that candy, but time was running out on her edge. So he probably said, well, let's just do it and get it over with. And God blessed them with two children, biological, and two children. Well, um, his daughter, her daughter, as, you know, we call it, uh, child brought in. You know, you were saying foster parent, not foster parent, but um, what do you call it? Call it? Uh, stepchild. So you have the two of them being stepped to each and other, each other's children or child. So I was so I was it, I was like it just like somebody punched me in my stomach and I lost consciousness when you sit up there and said you threw those kids out because you needed me time, you needed space time. Like no, you don't need no time, and you really don't need to be on the show. Now I was up there. You know, waving my cheerleaders thing, trying to cheer you on and, and say you giving good commentary because you coming at these women. And you may not even feel that way about them in real life. I don't know. Because like I always said, when you on shows like this, you on reality shows, ain't nowhere to have y'all friends. Because it's going to be somewhere, somebody going to say something out of turn and you're going to have to get them straight. Or you're going to have to think about your image. Either or, it was piss poor. Total piss poor. You cannot throw children away like you throwing away bad food. It just don't add up and it's just not right. Because now they already been thrown away by their mother. Thank you. Now they don't know where their father at, I'm guessing. Now you trying to throw them away and they feel like they have nobody in this world that will care for them. Not long term anyway. So they have to be together as one unit think together or was that a ploy or a storyline you was trying to put out there because you want everybody to hate you I don't see where you would be going with it because you would have more enemies than friends with you trying to make a storyline about this is how I parent. I'm going to throw them out. I'm going to send them uh, to someone else in the family to raise for a month. So this would teach them not to disobey me. Do what I say, not as I do type of mentality. I'm like, where? You can't just get, you can't make up this kind of shit. And by her doing and saying that on TV, you're going to have a lot of parents going to go out there and do the same shit you do. You did. You did. You did but you're going to find, they're going to find themselves in jail. Well, you should have found yourself in jail. Now, I found an article from Tobias Cheat Sheet where Marlo Hampton called herself going on. Fox's soul and dealing with Claudia Jordan and she's trying to say what she really meant to do and how it meant to work out. Let's just take a gander and listen here. Uh, this came about because, well, as we were talking this month, it's mental health um, awareness. Uh -huh. Their mother was going. Oh, wait a minute. Hit that wrong. Hit the wrong key, y'all. Hold on. an issue with mental health and uh, my sister has issues and we're praying and that hopefully one day everything gets together they called me one day april 4th as a matter of fact because we just celebrated a year and they were like auntie come and pick us up and i'm like come and pick you up for what they're like the people are here taking my auntie my mom away i'm like what people like is it jail what people so she got baker acted was taken away i just got out of surgery getting my uh foot time my bunion removed Juanita. I went and picked them up April 4th last year, and they've been here since. 
How, so, how do you feel well, seeing your sister like that? Is it something that's been ongoing your entire life? Or is it something... To tell you the truth, it has been something that's been going on my entire life. And growing up in a black family, I remember... This is my oldest sister, Sandra. Her name is Sandra. Mm -hmm. I looked up to her. We would go places. And she would come and say, Mom, this happened, this happened. I'm like, Mom, that didn't happen. But my mom would like, be quiet. You know your sister's special. You know, they would just sweep it under the rug, Claudia. But and that's how black families do because we have to project strength because we don't have the luxury like white women to go check in for two weeks to, to get therapy. We have to still, no matter what, pretend things are good when they're not. And I think that's such a disservice to young black women don't you think like it's like not fair absolutely because now at 44 i'm like god we would have just got help back then but my mom i remember and i even told my nephews i mean i don't know if it's good or not to tell them i'm like hey this has been going on for years mm -hmm. but my problem is my sister would not take her medication if she would just take her medication claudia if she would take her medication, but she says, oh, it makes me see things. It doesn't make me feel good. Then she'll call certain days being really mean and saying bad things to the boys. And I'm like, you know what? You have a phone. Call your mom whenever you want. If she calls you and if she's saying things are not nice, you don't have to talk to her. Mom, I love you and I'll talk to you later. But it's tough because I don't want to raise them saying, don't talk to your mom. You can't call her. On Mother's Day, I'm like, hey, did you order her a gift? Did you call her? And I want I want to ask them that. I want them to do it. Mm -hmm. But I also feel you can't get mad at her because she has a mental problem. Right. But then well, you I, them I, call her and she's saying, hey, Michael, the TV is talking to me. People are talking to me. So, Well, I commend you, Marlo. I commend you for, I, I haven't watched a show in a long time. And I got these in my notes. And I was like, that's dope. Like, I commend you for that to take on the responsibility of children that are not yours and to do, to do that. So kudos to you. Well, let me say something about Marlo. I just wanted to also say that, um, you know, Marlo and I don't always agree on everything. We kind of have our own little relationship outside of the show and on the show. But at the end of the day, um, I've always tried to be supportive and I couldn't be prouder of you um, for taking on your nephews and just you know, helping your your sister, like it's so commendable, and I know that the rewards are like beyond. Because I mean, okay. you are truly a monty, and I just have a lot of respect for what you're doing. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I need that because as a mother, I even respect you as well. Because it's no joke. Just being a full time monty is days. Like I said, I'm in here crying. Hold up, then Marlo put herself in the category as being a mother. Oh, hell to the no, no, no. No, you're not a mother, my law. A mother who cared for her children, whether they were good, bad, or indifferent. You would stay in the fight with them. You just don't throw them away. And then there is medication out there that it comes in liquid form, meaning an injection that your sister could have got. You don't necessarily have to take oral pills anymore. Because a lot of people are just not compliant with taking pills. They forget about it. They don't want to go through the hassle. It upsets them, you know, in various different ways. But if you got the shot, you got coverage for three months or a month or, or whatever. And you don't have to worry about the mundane, mundane things of taking and remembering of taking a pill. So that's just still fucked up in my book and everybody wants to throw roses at your feet and say oh you're a loyal person you're a good person for helping your sister out and she's taking all of that but she don't give a shit about that if you look at the interview on Fox Soul Marlo Hampton talks with Claudia or whatever you'll see she didn't have like no thank you thank you a, a, a upbeat type of expression she just felt like she's tired of these kids they're not hers why bother why even i'm not their mother so why should i be bothered with them i went through mental health issues with my sister since we have been both in the world and you know black families like to just sweep stuff up in the road no 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 black families white families asian families indian families they have come to realize they need both they need prayer as well as man medication management when it comes to mental health now it's different when you don't have 
you know, the coverage to be taken care of, which is talking to a, a counselor here and there, getting on medicines uh, to manage your health care when it comes to your mentalness. Marlo, shut, sit your ass down somewhere. Stop portraying yourself as you know you're doing right by these boys. And then on the other hand, you need to do right by yourself. You've always had yourself. It's always been you, yourself, and I, or me, myself, and I. Would it have hurt a little further down till you got these kids out of high school? But now you want to give them back when they're in middle school? Or maybe, yeah, probably middle school is where I'm seeing them at. I mean, you had them from almost since babies. And now they're thriving and growing up in an environment that you put them in. Have you ever thought about the damage you're doing to them from inception of having them and then throwing them out to another family member for a month from what you say? Now, what type of environment did you put them in? Is it worse or is it better? Nine times out of ten, it may be worse because you put it on your sister who's already overwhelmed, underpaid, and she's fighting her own battles with trying to raise Four children. And you're going to put two more on her. I mean it's six. And you you in this house you're supposed to be building. That has what five bedrooms. And now you just want all the rooms for yourself. Like y'all can come visit. But y'all can't stay. I mean are your rented men. That are hiring you for services. Is that getting in your way. Because you can't do certain things around the kitties. Well. And before you took that money allegedly from the state and said you were going to be their guardian, you should have pumped brace and just really realized, is this something I can do? I mean, because from what I understand, you you saying your mama had uh, mental issues as well. So it would be plausible you might got some mental issues as well that you definitely need to uh, seek counseling for. But what you did is just, this is horrible, horrible. But let's go on into this article that Showbiz Cheat Sheet had wrote out on Mr. Uh, well, Marlo Hampton, Candy Burrs, and Sheree Whitfield. And I'm telling you, Sheree, you might be losing your spot because your friend is a little bit more appealing and worthy enough to hold the peach. Because you could never hold a storyline to save your life, baby. And uh, your friend is showing a little bit more likability than you are. Because, again, you're seen as a flip-flopper. But we're going into the story. Brenda Alexander wrote it up on Showbiz Cheat Sheet. She titled it Real Housewives of Atlanta. Candy Burris and Sheree Whitfield scold Marlo Hampton for kicking nephews out. Now, just like they have a pet organization when you mistreat uh pets and when you try to shave their fur and, and do all these other things uh, well, you know against them Peter should be all up in your behind if these kids were animals which they are not so some other animal I mean some other organization need to come out and protest against you and what you did and you was like happy to give the information out there hey I just threw my underage teenagers out well, them my sister kids, not mine, but they got on my nerves. Like, somebody should be at your house interviewing you, investigating you for a crime. Because that really is a crime, is what you did. <sighs> anyway, we go into the story. It says The Real Housewives of Atlanta is currently airing uh, its 14th season, and viewers see a different side of Marlo Hampton. Until now, Hampton has been known as the shady and fashion diva of the bunch. But this time around, she's showcasing life as a guardian. Uh, to her two teenage nephews. In the latest episode, Hampton revealed parenting struggles and how she went about disciplining her nephews for disobeying her rules. After revealing she kicked them out for 30 days, Candy Burris and Sheree Whitfield shared their differing opinions on Hampton's approach. Marlo Hampton reveals um, she kicked out her nephews for, out of her house for 30 days. Uh, Hampton goes furniture shopping with Whitfield and Samuel or Sonia Richards Ross. She tells the ladies that she kicked her nephews out for 30 days because of their bad behavior. I mean, come on, they ain't in jail. They ain't in your custody. Like, you, you know, they don't did some kind of 
a virulent crime or something to that. Come on, Marlo. You ain't that dumb. You ain't that conceited to understand what's going on here. But anyway, going back to the article. At the beginning of the episode, Hampton sits with the two teenagers and explains she's disappointed in their change in attitude. According to Hampton, the oldest nephew has been getting in trouble in school, talking back to his teacher and not doing well academically. She says both are not following rules and attributes the change to them feeling upset about their mother being incarcerated. Well, that may be here, that may be not. You know what I'm saying? Teenagers are just that. They're teenagers, they're emotional, and they don't see their caregivers or their parents as the one that's looking out for them. They all tied up in their friends, and their friends know more than the parents know. Okay? That's just how it is, Marlo. And I know you have people you associate with that have kids and you probably had to let them bend your ear for listening because they were fed up but in nowhere in the conversation brought out that they were going to get rid of their kids okay i know some people parenting get rid of their kids when it comes to summer being out they put their asses in summer camp meaning they ship them off but they're around their peers they are said to be having fun, learning, you know, new things, uh, meeting new people. And it's just a good thing for them to be away from home for a while to see can they handle it. Okay? I find it kind of mean, especially if the child don't want to go. But, you know, their children, they have to do what their parents feel best. And the parents have to outweigh the pros and the cons to sending them to camp. And if they both, or many both parents were in this scenario, or we had, you know, single parents, they had to outweigh the risk versus the importance of them learning something new. Okay, but going back to the article, it says Hampton tells her co-stars that she sent them to her little sister's house, stating she needed a break. Things are so bad, she's in therapy to get support and believes family therapy will benefit them all. She also says she feels her nephews are ungrateful regarding the plush life she's providing them and she's fearful she might be spoiling them and not raising them right now you know what marlo sounds like y'all remember that movie that played way back in the day flowers in the attic or mommy dearest that's just what the type of person she's giving me like she's the evil uh stepmom you know what i'm saying or evil mom in a scenario don't you know just berating you that's making you think lesser than i mean Marlo, you got some issues babe and i'm being serious about that you can't be taking care of somebody else's children when you got shit of your own that you need to work out okay it's a shame nobody else want to take the kids maybe they need to be in foster care and we will be riding you until we can't ride you no more okay because you were supposed to take them, love them, provide for them, shelter them. And then you just, mm, no, I'm not feeling it anymore. I want to have my peace or my, I, I, I don't have an insurance. So you're going to throw them to the wind. No, that's not what you do. And some legal action could be taken against you if the right person did what they needed to do. If, in fact, you just used them as a storyline and wanted to make yourself look good to sign a lucrative deal with Bravo. Meaning, you know. You're supposed to be doing a good thing. You're being a good Samaritan. You're showing other people how family can step in and help other family members. That was your whole plot. That was your whole storyline. Now you feel like you don't made it halfway through. You don't deliver what you needed to deliver. Plus, you don't got on some girls that you say you wanted them to work for their check this time. Uh, yeah. But don't bite off too much of that tree that you eating them apples and oranges and bananas on, okay? Because you might choke yourself. Point taken, look at Phaedra. Point taken, look at Nene. Point taken, look at Sheree. She's been a friend of the show. She's been a real peach holder. She had to come back and be a friend of the show. So I'm like, come on. It's like a rotating type um door you're going through and you don't even realize or maybe you do and you just don't care you know you're going to crash and burn so you're just going to ride it till you know the wheels fall off okay if that's what you're going for good got it i understand then we got um sheree whitfield disagrees with marlo hampton's approach uh during the real housewives of Atlanta after show the cast discussed hampton's disciplinary approach whitfield's believes she could have handled it the situation better well why you didn't tell her that why did you not open up your mouth and said, hey, I had to deal with four kids of my own, but guess what? I made it. 
All right, there's a lot of tough things that had to be done, said, and go through, but we made it. We came out from the, the darkness to the light. That's something you should have been telling uh, Marlo instead of like how Marlo's saying sweeping it up on the rug. When she likes to bring everything to the forefront, good, bad, or indifferent, that's her, her claim to fame. You should have did the same thing on her ass, uh, Sheree. So I'm like, I don't even want to see you on the show no more. You need to go into the wind. And, and, and deal with no good trapping men. They got you all so strung out. Because they probably throwing dollar signs in your face. And you want to be the it factor. So you go along with that shit. Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on your, you and your storyline. Also, Sheree. Uh, but moving on from that situation. Um, everybody parents differently. She said she needed a break. Which at times we all need a break as parents. But just sending the kids away. Or kicking them out. Because she got frustrated with that. I did not agree with that at all, Whitfield said. Again, why you didn't tell her that? Okay, Whitfield notes that uh, Hampton's nephews has previously histories of being in an unstable environment. This is something that they've been going through pretty much all of their lives. For me, it wasn't the right thing to do, she added. Candy, Burr says Marla Hampton version of the story just don't add up. Okay. Burr shared similar sentiments in a recent episode of her YouTube channel, Speak on It. Hampton also confided in Burris uh, during the episode and Burris suggested that they go to therapy. In her YouTube video, Burris admitted she felt it was a contrast in the way she told the story to her versus Whitfield and Richard Ross. Okay. When she first told me uh, the part about I told them to get the fuck out, they didn't catch all of that on camera because she and I were talking before the cameras were there. So that's why they had to do the cutaway the way they did. She was very more emotional about it, um, way more anxious and upset. It was a totally different vibe from when she spoke with Sheree and Sonya. Burr said she went on to explain the conversation she had with them to me. I it felt like she had more time to figure out how she really wanted to present it on TV. So, see, even Candy can recognize. <laughs> Anybody that's been in the game, the street game, as well as being a professional, know there's different codes. There are different levels. And Marlo just played the shit out of Marvel and herself. Because now, in the public opinion, nobody's really caring. Or a large population of individuals are not really caring about Marlo now. Because she's not the it factor. She's the negative factor that you don't want to wish on anybody's children or anybody's life. I mean, you can't just uh, have kids and get rid of them the next day. Just like you can't go to a shelter and adopt a dog and the dog doing too much, messing up in your house and this, that, and third, so you take the dog back. No. No. That's not how life goes. That's not how you treat animals or human beings. So, that's all I got for this video, guys. You got two people. Well, to me, you got Candace, the only one saying this shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? From the uh, realization that um, she talked to both women about the situation she was going through. We don't need to have a pity party for Marlo. We, not, we don't need to say, Marlo, we understand what you're going through. Because we are all, or majority of us, have been somebody's role model where they had to take up the slack where the parents were missing at or it was mothers and fathers going through the same thing with their children and they just couldn't give up on them just because they going through this hard phase no and when she did that last episode not the one that we saw last Sunday but the one before that when she was saying that they was just so hurt that her, their mother didn't want to talk to them and try to, you know, because I was saying, you don't need to put that shit on TV because kids are cruel. When they go back to school, they're going to be like, ooh, your mama don't love you or this, that, and the third. Ooh, your auntie put you out. Ooh, you know, it's like you ain't thinking about any of that shit. And they're not really on TV to be seen or shown or get paid for. They're living their life. That's why they call it reality TV. So when you do all these different things just to show the network that you're valuable, you can bring the ratings in. It's bullshit. Because why would you want money, fame, and power or, you know, prestige over the safety of your nephew's mental capacities? <laughs> I'm like, you, you totally floored me with this bullshit. So that's all I have, guys, for you all. And I will see y'all next video. Bye-bye.